It wasn't a long stream last night, but it was a effort filled stream. Um Yes, Cricks. Um Um The Twitch user counter is um special. Let's just put it that way. When I um checked in with my phone the main listing for the channel listed it as two people. There were 20. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a special thing. Oh my. Karina. Jesus, that was a fucking dump and a half. <sighs> Whatever. Good luck with that, Karina. Good luck with that. Um, hey, Wither. Yeah, Cass. <laughs> it was, um, last night was a good stream. Like, legitimately, it was a good stream. Um, I hate that kind of shit. Oh, I hate that kind of shit, Karina. Oh. Aw, Leo. Congratulations. Now all you need is, like, a, a bird to land on your finger or your shoulder or something. Some sort of animal creature to like, crawl up on you and... Yeah, Disney princess status confirmed. Oh, thank you, Wither. Um, yeah, it was it was a good, it was a good show. It was a good fucking show. Um, I was quite satisfied with the content. Who the fuck? Um, add to playlist, save. Sorry, I'm doing last night's work uh, in the middle of the stream today, because that's how I roll, apparently. We're just fixing the, uh, the YouTube playlist. Because, frankly, I tried watching a VOD through Twitch the other day. Um, don't do that. Hey, Kezzy and Kezzy's people. 
Um, yeah, don't don't watch my VODs. Like, don't watch anybody's VODs, but don't watch my VODs on Twitch. Because fuck that. Dude, every, like, ten minutes, there's, like, three ads and shit like that. Go over to YouTube, where you can strip the ads out and shit like that, right? The, everything gets uploaded to YouTube. Just go over there and watch it, because, frankly, that was bullshit. Um, Gemma, I mean, as well as I'm going to be today. <sighs> oh, I'd really prefer that not to be in... <sighs> in mods, Karina. Whatever. It is what it is, right? It is what it is. Um, oh, my God. Coin flip. Ah! It's gone. It's gone. Um, sorry, everybody. Sorry about that. There's, We're just dealing with somebody behind the scenes. Or, well, we're preparing to deal with somebody behind the scenes, apparently. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, how did your stream go, Kaz? How's everybody? Um... Somebody's got, um, nice guy vibes. We'll put it that way. Um, went okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah, Gemma. Oh, I'm knackered. It's been a day. That's a fun word. We don't use that word enough. Knackered. Um... Yeah, we should use that word more on this this side of the on this side of the ocean. Fucking knackered. Um, I like chuffed and right chuffed and knackered and twat and um, those are those are the ones I really want. Um, Americans should get more comfortable with cunt as well. Um, right cunt, you fucking hilarious cunt. I love you, you cunt. Um, yeah. Um. A Genesis. Um, I mean, as well as I can be. Fucking this broken bullshit. Um, they're not self-described, uh, redacted, but yeah, definitely got that energy going for sure. Um, I like bugger. <laughs> uh, I, I honestly, um, Hold on, guys. Guys.
All right. Um, <laughs> may allow that. All right. Um, Gemma, more like the. How dare you say no to me? Um. Hey, Friedman. Just getting started. Just getting started. Um, we're just, we're having to deal with some shit behind the scenes right now. Um. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's just part of uh, Friedman Genesis. Well, welcome. This is this is part of like running a community, right? Disparate personalities, various types, especially when you have a, an open door policy and all sorts may show up on your doorstep. You never know. Um, well, it, it's streamer stuff, but it's also activist community organizer stuff, so... Zippy, Zippy, it wasn't you. Um, yeah, so it is what it is. Um, so fucking, where was that? Um, oh, somebody posted it because I had it as well. Oh, Mississippi, 70% of the calls to poison control in, recently in Mississippi have been for the ingestion of livestock or animal formulation of ivermectin purchased at livestock supply centers because apparently the like anti-vaxxer MAGA fucking COVID is a hoax crowd are now um, on some like cattle dewormer cures COVID trip. And they're fucking consuming livestock grade intended for bovine use dewormer. I am, Friedman. Most of the community is. Um... There's a few that aren't, um, but most of us are, yeah. Um, most, like, I mean, several of us have, like, intimate healthcare industry, doctoral, nursing, relations, experience, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so, yeah, there's quite a few of us that understand the technology. Um... So, Krusty, what's up? Um, it's been going on for a while. I uh, heard about it in Alabama a while back. Jesus Christ. Take that just down a notch. Um, yep, pharmacy. Um, how about DeSantis getting caught taking advice from somebody who has the money in the mono, uh, monoclonal antibodies thing? Oh, I'm not surprised, Rev. I'm not surprised at all. Um, I'm Moderna. Um, that's that's the one I ended up with. Um, yeah, it's a dewormer. Ivermectin is a dewormer. It's not intended for human consumption, I don't think, at all. Is it on label, um, for human consumption at all? Okay, it is approved for heavy load intestinal parasitic worms in one of its formulations. It, it, one of its formulations has FDA clearance um, for humans. <clears throat> so there's that. Um, so <laughs> yeah, and they think that I guess COVID is a worm now, a, a parasitic worm. Maybe I don't look, I'm not going to pretend I can understand the brain of somebody living in Mississippi or Arkansas or Alabama 
who has <clears throat> no education to speak of and has been listening to OAN and Fox News and Rush Limbaugh and Trump for their entire fucking life, basically, in the last four fucking six years, whatever, at this point. I can't. I can't pretend to know what, what goes through the mind of somebody like that. Um, but apparently what's going through 70% of the uh, people who have called the Mississippi Poison Control Center recently was ivermectin will cure COVID, which, <laughs> ah, doc, no worries. You're welcome. You do good work. i um, happy to happy to do it. Um, did you end up having a good stream, doc? Uh, you continued your, um, your ethics, um, investigation of ethics. Uh, yeah, it isn't. It's not an antiviral, exactly. Oh shit! Really? Uh, yeah. Uh, Friedman, Fridays I almost always stream on because Fridays are bad movie night. Give me one second. Well, the new bed arrived with a fucked up shoulder and a fucked up ankle. Um, definitely, definitely when I wanted to be dealing with that. Uh, brought you out of your funk from yesterday. We talked a little about ethics, but then focused on new emotes. Well, I'm glad that you got out of your funk. That alone makes it worthwhile. Um, Juniper System, thank you for the follow. <laughs> Viva. Straight up. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Those are big bad worms and COVID is uh, is those are big bad bugs and COVID is a small bad bug. So clearly it'll be able to kill it since it's smaller and if it can kill the bigger one, it can kill the smaller one, right? That's cuz that's how things work. Right? Um Oh, Doc, this day is just starting for me. I'm on, like, the opposite schedule from, like, most functioning human beings. So I'm sort of, like, at the beginning of my day. Um, bad movie night. Our lord and savior, everyone. Um, bad movie night is where, after stream... We join each other, we join together on the Discord server in one big old voice call, and we watch bad movies together. Um, occasionally, they're not bad movies, but the founding principle of um, bad movie night is, is are bad movies. Movies that are so horrible that they're amazing. Neil Breen, our lord and savior. Um, Breen, if you see the stream title, Breen's Day, right? Neil Breen is a Las Vegas based filmmaker who makes amazingly bad, so good films. And he is sort of like the. That's Neil Breen. Um, he's sort of the guiding principle of, of Bad Movie Night. Um, we watch movies that are so shit they're good. We, we get together. We get drunk or high, we get our buzz on, and we watch shit movies and decompress from the horrors of authoritarian capitalist systems. We spend the week talking theory and analyzing events and talking about the horrors of the world and who got raped, who got murdered, who got genocided, who's oppressing who now, right? Like this is what we do as a community to a significant, significant extent. And so Friday nights after the stream, we get together, we get buzzed, and we have a very cathartic laugh together. It's healthy. Uh, yeah, shit movies or porn. Look, okay, so we did watch a porn movie once. <laughs> it's not what it sounds like. 
there's this 1976-1974 Alice in Wonderland musical X-rated film. It's a porn, but it's a musical, but it's Alice in Wonderland. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's Alice in Wonderland. It is batshit insane. It's batshit insane. And so we watched that. It, it's... Nobody made it weird. Nobody made it weird. It is... It was, it was a good laugh. It was a legitimately good laugh. Um, we, we had a lot of fun. Um, men, women, gay, straight, trans, cisgendered. There's, the room was filled with all types. Nobody made it weird. It was, it was legitimately a good chuckle. Um, so, it's a one-off. Um, yeah, it was indeed hilarious. Um, no, no Flesh Gordon. Um, and so that's what we do on Friday nights. We watch... We watch crazy fucking movies. Um, and we decompress from a week of horror. That's bad movie, for a bad movie night. Happens after the stream. Um, usually 45 minutes to an hour and a half after the stream ends, the movie begins. And you're always welcome. Um, you're, you're always welcome. So far, we haven't hit our limit. We've gotten close to the amount of people we can have on a single session. But we haven't quite hit it yet, so it's still just an open door policy. If you'd like to join us, um, Friedman, Genesis, uh, Doc, Bitwin, um, I think I nailed that. If I didn't, forgive me, Doc. Um, so, like, yeah, you're always welcome. Um, oh. I don't know what we're watching this week. Um, just because Red Hour. Um, we we have a schedule um, for the next couple of weeks um, because one of my OG community members from back before Twitch and everything, um, he's been having a rough go of it, and I introduced him to Neil Breen, and it literally made like it took him out of depression i'm not kidding his words he's he's talked about this like literally my my love for neil breen and neil breen's insanity as a filmmaker it, it lifted him out of a depression um and so we're doing the neil breen filmography but we're skipping every other week so he can be there for it because that's how his schedule works um so this week is not neil breen films it's something else and we did not decide last week what we're gonna watch so we're gonna play it by the you know we're just gonna play it by ear and we'll figure something out as we go i can make it happen it's not a big deal um and we'll go from there <sighs> Oh, we could do um, something we can easily drink to. We could watch The Astrologer. I mean, we could throw that in the mix. Or we could do something completely fresh. We could do something completely fresh. That's that's up to you guys. You guys make that decision amongst yourselves. Whoever shows up, we can figure it out. Because um, that's how it works. You have to be present to have a say in it. Um, hey, Squid. I, you can, yeah, Gemma, um, you can suggest it by all means. Um, and if you want to drop it in as a suggestion in the Bad Movie Night channel on the Discord server, so, like, it stays somewhere. Mm, probably. Patronum, probably. It's probably ableist against, uh, deaf people. Just like, um... Uh, a blind run, uh, a blind playthrough, is ableist against the you know uh, the blind or something whatever. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> Bobby, good luck in not being well. It's gonna gonna lead to an inter interesting thing. Hey, Akka, is Akka here right now? Um, if Akka's here, I can answer Akka's question. 
directly. Um, well, um, but, all right, with that being said, like, I think we did, we did enough community fucking business. Um, music is ableist, um, story girl. I'm sure, I'm sure there's a woke scold out there that would fucking say it. I'm sure one of them would say it. Uh, premarital that that's that is quite the mix-up isn't it um i would suggest that you just go with it sounds like a good time um R. Kelly? Yeah, I know, right? Just that. Just that. Just that. Right? Like, I take a breath. I fucking... R. Kelly. R. Kelly's physician testified that he has knowingly had herpes since 2007. And the prosecutors have uh, alleged in the case... That he knowingly was going around infecting people, not telling anybody. Not as bad as a purposeful HIV infection. Won't carry the same penalty. But it definitely speaks to him being a shit human being. Um, as if we didn't already know. <laughs> um, him and fucking... Who's the other one? Chris Brown. Um, Chris Brown's worse. Yeah, I don't want to fucking Olympics, pain Olympics that shit. Um, oh, Kez, I was talking about R. Kelly actually. R. Kelly, um, his physician testified he's known he had herpes since 2007 and has been going around knowingly giving it to people. Um, yeah, and who's the other one that pisses me off? Amber Heard. That's, that's who. Um. Amber Heard. She annoys the fuck out of me, too. Fucking. She's a crazy fucking. Um, Friedman, just because you haven't been here, we've done entire spiels on Charlie Sheen. So, is no one going to mention Charlie Sheen? We've... We've beat that dead horse. We've even done the alleged child abuse of Corey Haim back in the Lucas era. Um, so, if you're aware of that even. Um, yes, yes, Depp was done shitty by her and the system. Um... Leo, Shameless UK or Shameless US? Because I watched all of Shameless UK. I watched like maybe a couple of episodes. Oh man, see, I'm a Shameless UK guy. I prefer the UK version of that show. I'm not saying every fucking UK US, the UK is always better. I'm just saying for Shameless, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with the UK version on that one. I prefer the original Frank Gallagher. Don't get me wrong. William H. Macy is good, but I prefer the original Frank Gallagher. Yeah, it, it's there's there's something I don't know more tragic, more dire, more shameless about the UK version than the US version. Yeah, 
Yeah, see that Joey. Yeah, I, I you know, that, yeah, they because they took it out of the 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 estates, and like I'm familiar. I've watched enough British media over the years. I'm at least familiar with a version of the council estate culture. Probably not the true version, of course, but I, I, you know, I could understand what was going on. The U.S. version takes it out of the council estates, and I'm not sure it translates. Um. So. Yeah, yeah, premarital. Hey, boss. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, and whoever said fuck Amber Heard. Fuck Amber Heard. Um, <clears throat> oh, yeah, um, fucking Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick. Texas um, blamed the Democrats and the black community for the spread of COVID. For the party of personal responsibility, when's the last time any of these fuckers took personal responsibility for anything? Does anybody remember? I... I I can't, I can't quite remember. They're always yapping on and on about personal responsibility and shit. But honestly, I don't remember the last time any of them took responsibility for anything. <laughs> exactly. Thanks, Obama. Um, yes, the kill Grammy for the economy guy. Zippy. No, oh no, cupcake! It's it's absolutely he's the dude's batshit insane. I mean, to start with, right? Like he's batshit insane. Um, most of the uh, <clears throat> most of the numbers are that are with the unvaccinated, and the Democrats like to blame Republicans on that. Well, the biggest group in most states are African Americans who have not been vaccinated. The last time I checked, over 90% of them vote for Democrats in their major cities and major counties. So it's up to the Democrats to uh, could get just as that. It's up to it's up to Republicans to try to get as many people vaccinated. Um. He ended his statements by saying he respects the rights of people who don't want to get the vaccine and we won't be forced, but nothing is being done to the Afri African-American community, quote, that has a significantly high number of unvaccinated people. God. I have, I have six soon to be seven grandchildren and four of them are in elementary school i'm not gonna tell my son and my daughter-in-law what to do with their children regarding masks i'm not gonna tell my daughter and my son-in-law what to do about their children and their masks that's up to my daughter and my son to make that decision on a lot of factors so if i'm not gonna tell my own son or son and daughter why would I tell strangers out there? We have five and a half million kids in public schools. That's more kids in school than half of the states have people, I think. I'm not going to tell the parents of Texas this is what you must do and neither should the department it would be and neither should the Department of Education or the Biden administration. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, everyone. Um. Oh, you mean the party which almost entirely believes in laying your sin on the dead guy? Yeah, that those guys. Yeah, the party of responsibility. 
Might as well just blame the Jews at that uh, at that point. Speed run the fascism. I mean, it. You know. Yeah. Um. anybody else suddenly hear banjos um he's he's basically the second in charge rev he's 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 assistant governor <gasps> jesus christ patronum really the fucking Sackler family. Oh, I have a hard on for doing shit to the Sackler family. We should. Oh, those fuckers should be just thrown into an island prison and never let out again. Like all of their progeny, just the entire blood lineage of the Sackler should just be isolated on an island. Take confiscate all of their assets. Ooh, I have a hard on for fucking just taking all of the Sackler's ill-gotten gains. Mm. Interesting, Patrona. I hear the agreement that Purdue Pharma and the family, Sacklers, uh, is looking to make would grant future immunity to a host of people. One includes Luther Strange, an Alabama GOP politician. In 2016, Alabama prescribed 1.21 opioid prescriptions per resident, over one per every man, woman, and child. Oh, God. Do we actually have one in chat? We have one in chat. Holy shit, I just noticed that. Newman Leary. Well, Jewish people are not innocent. You're not being very honest there. We have one. Oh, God. This this early? Um... <laughs> Doc. Um, oh, yeah. Dude, enjoy that book, Patronum. Dude, the Sacklers are... Do they go back to the 40s? The fucking, like, Arthur Sackler's responsible for creating advertising to doctors. I'm not kidding you. He created, like, a bi-weekly advertisement just to, um, just to promote Valium for all sorts of shit. Hey, um, back... Uh, so, um... Anxiety can cause tension. Tension can cause neck and back pain. We should prescribe Valium for neck and back pain too? Created the first $100 million pharmaceutical drug by doing just that. The Sacklers have a history of doing this shit. Multi-generationally, they have a history of this shit. Dude, if anybody needs like their entire family like cordoned off from society it's the sacklers dude they're super toxic they're super fucking toxic and and have been for 80 years yeah <sighs> viva it sounds like you're edging hard um Chat, 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 point and laugh at Newman Leary. Go. Um, hey, Jack. And he just tagged himself. He just tagged himself, of course. Um... It wasn't, but what's wrong with giving me volume for my anxiety? That sounds like fun time. It wasn't that it was they were, it was the off label prescription that they figured out, Patrona. That, like, oh, hey, we can advertise directly to doctors using a bi weekly periodical, and in that periodical, we can convince them of anything.
Dude, I was just thinking about this earlier today. Because we had one we had one run in the Jewish question last night too. There's a weird amount of anti-Semitism. Like it's disproportionate. That that always strikes me. Like it's it's a disproportionate amount comparatively to population statistics. And if you look into the history of anti-Semitism, it goes back a long time. It's it's there's there's a global tradition of hating on the Jews. It's it's super fucking weird when you get into it. Whether no, they don't. This is why um, this is why the opioid crisis was partially as bad as it was because the Sacklers via Purdue Pharmaceutical convinced the doctors of this nation that OxyContin wasn't habit forming. That heroin in a time released pill wasn't habit forming. So, yeah, no, doctors actually don't research a whole lot of this, and in many instances, they're incentivized by the pharmaceutical industry to not look into these things. So, yeah. I'm not following it, so give me one sec. Um, Oh, he's got a blog? Oh, somebody, somebody hook a brother up. Hang on, hang on. I didn't know there was a blog. Oh, we gotta, we gotta fucking, hang on. Me? No. Nope. Although I do have um, one side of my family has a whole bunch of like ethnically Jewish people in it. Like one branch. I'm not directly, really directly connected to them though. Um, I've got, um, if you're actually curious, Friedman, um, my, my paternal side is basically German. Um, they came over um, right before my grandfather's. Uh, he came over as a child. Um, and my p maternal side is just mutt. Um, good old-fashioned American everything. Heavy Scot-Irish, but we've got at least uh, one black man and one indigenous man uh, on that side. Um, so I like to say my mom's side like the fuck. Um, they were down. Um they were just broke ass white people up in the hills uh, of the South. They were those types, um, and sort of that's that's my heritage, pretty much. Um, so, yeah, that's sort of what formed this bullshit. Um. Oh, so Newman Leary's philosophical blog. Is there a copyright on any of this? Do not sell my personal information. Blog at wordpress.com. No copyright. No explicit claims to ownership of information. So, interesting. Yeah, Friedman. You know, old school version of it. Hey, you're hot. Wanna fuck? I know where I got it from. Uh, oh, shit. Oh, this is... Oh, this is bad. 
Oh, you're going to love this. Hey, Friedman. Friedman, Friedman, Friedman. You're going to love this headline. Hang on. So this is from this dude's blog. In defense of of racial segregation and exposing its denial as an empowerment of short-lived consumerist anti-intellectual societies and slavery. Racial segregation is required not just for a peaceful world, but also for one to exist at all, or to be more clear, the one we refer to as a modern civilization. Without racial segregation, we are experiencing a massacre of people adapted to live in a civilization by such that are not adapted to it, or to say rather, adapted at surviving in impoverished settings. I wonder who he's talking about, Friedman. I wonder who he's talking about. It's, it, it explains it explains why they can't plan long term oh, they they love this it explains why they can't plan long term and lack impulse control this in turn leads to an impossible amount of not just experience but also genetic adaptation that they can't catch up with the very idea of racial diversity stems from preying behavior that wants to maximize profit and lower the cost as immigrants get paid less and could easily be manipulated to work for more uh, work more for less, which can be traced back to Rome, Egypt, and other civilizations that got destroyed in the end by the very same immigrants. Would those be North African immigrants at that time? Rome and Egypt? Oh, this is, dude, this is a fucking gold mine this is ridiculous his latest one was about anti-semitism of course yeah Friedman I have no clue who they speak of yeah it's just uh, you know uh, yeah, right you know who's who's the they it's it seems it seems so nebulous right holy shit man Uh, Friedman, you see that guy uh, in chat, Newman Leary? Uh, the one who just responded after you? That's who. The one going off about the Jews in chat, Newman Leary? That's who wrote this. It's on his WordPress blog. This, this blog is fucking... There's only... Oh, there's a fucking lack of content, though. Yeah. Yeah, it's... it's Go to his profile. Go to the About section of his profile. And there will be a WordPress link there. That's where we're pulling this shit from. <laughs> He's like, I'm not anti-Semitic. I'm not racist. It's like, yeah, cue the racist anti-Semitic blog posts. <laughs> oh, my ankle's not really. All right, Newman, let me give you a let me give you a, hint, uh, a a tip as somebody who's been doing this for a minute. Just just bro to bro, just dude to dude. Take them at face value. Maya Angelou's rule: when somebody sh uh, shows you who they are, believe them. Thank you, Kaz. Um, yeah, that that's that's my general policy. Friedman is my Angelou's rule. When when somebody tells you who they are, just believe them. <laughs> um, oh, really? They're super comfortable, comfortable Newman, and all of those like weird people that you'd probably idolize wore them. Like the Celts wore them. The fight Alexander of Macedonia conquered the known world wearing a skirt. The fucking Roman legions wore skirts. The fucking Spartans wore skirts. 
it ha- it's super comfortable. It's freeing. It cools your boys even more, which increases your sperm count and potential testosterone production. The Nords wore skirt, like the Vikings wore fucking skirts. Like, so like all of those people, you probably like, you know, rubbing one out to on a regular skirts. Hey Empress, um, well you certainly do um, <clears throat> you certainly do write about them a little bit, Newman. I'm just forgive me. I'm just. <laughs> oh my god this is the greatest headline ever this is the greatest headline ever this is newman newman props man thank you empress um this blog title is amazing White European history as self-acquired reparations that get constantly canceled. This is great. Oh my god, I have to read this. I have to read this. This is like a paragraph. Bear with me. Bear with me. You guys have to hear this. You have to hear this. Newman, I'm going to platform your craziness. I am going to platform your craziness, Newman. Congratulations. You baited me successfully. This is, I, I, dude, you just fucking hooked me, man. Good night, Kez. This is insane. This is insane. This is, this is fucking, all right, y'all ready for this shit? This is bad shit. This is bad shit. This is fucking amazing. All right, we're going to do we're going to do reading voice Kai everybody. <clears throat> Dude, Freeman. No, you have to like this is crazy. You have to hear this shit. There are a lot of misconceptions, lies or outright manipulations of the history we know so far. The biggest one is that white people were the biggest colonizers, that they were the most bloodlust people or that they need to pay people reparations for what they did didn't two other races he missed the do following what history has showed us shown us so far it all begins you need um you need a proof you need a good proofreader my man um your grammar sucks following what history has shown us so far it all begins with the migration of indo-europeans to white europe and they didn't come in peace nor without leaving traits the next few seem to be egypt rome and hellenic greece in no particular order again you, you're missing dude god damn it you need in which slowly but surely white people begun 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 began to lose their numbers to the ever-breeding migrants, which in turn created mixed-race societies, and thus the end of these civilizations. Dun, dun, dun. Though that marked South Europe forever. Do you mean marred? Though that marred Southern Europe forever? I mean, Jesus Christ, you really need somebody to proofread this shit. Like, isn't there a racist out there who fucking has like a literature degree or an English degree or something? Though that marked South Europe forever, but there was even something more tragic. Tragic. That of the Moorish, Ottoman, and Mongolic invasions and their long-term colonization through genetic remnants. This, exp- this explained the fascination of colonization that comes from some European countries. This leaves us to the conclusion that white people were not just victims of constant invasion, but their actions of colonization comes from immigrants, Jewish, he literally in parentheses puts Jewish. That's not just me fucking reading into it. He literally says Jewish here, folks. 
and leftovers from invasions, and thus they have nothing to feel guilty of. Modern cries for reparation stem from misunderstanding or outright manipulation of history. Not only that, but white people can't even begin to bear the fruits of their reparations as victims to countless invasions. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. <laughs> I, can't, I can't. I don't even know where to start. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> are you oh okay so gr grammatical and vocabulary mistakes aside because it's a shit show from a, a copy editor or a proofreader's point of view sincerely it's a shit show man you need to go through that thing again like that that's the grammar and vocab of mm, maybe a seventh grader you need to fix that shit those those issues aside you have attempted to remove such a degree of historical context nuance understanding diaspora genetic migration and a whole literal textbooks textbooks worth of information and put a paragraph that basically can be summed up as woe is me white people got fucked too now white people have been fucked europe is wrought with all sorts of moorish and ottoman and mongolic <laughs> invasions oh my god the history of mankind is written in conquest. There's no avoiding that. But your title of that piece alone gives... It, it, it demonstrates what you're attempting to say. Is that any of the injustices or the wrongs or the genocides that European white Europeans may or may not have committed are literally justified under the fact that those are self-acquired reparations? Sure, maybe we, you know, raided and raped location A, B, C, D, E, F, G. It doesn't matter, right? Sure, maybe we did that, but those are self-acquired reparations for other stuff other people did. So where does the cycle of reparations begin and where does the cycle of reparations end? Because there were conquests from European settlers into those regions. Does uh, the Crusades were a back and forth for a thousand years? Who owes who in this regard? How do we tally this up? Where is the score sheet that you're keeping? How have you scored it? What, by what rubric are you scoring it? See, here's my problem. Is your one dude who has clearly no education on these topics, who has no understanding of the historical context, no nuance to what he says whatsoever, and based on your grammatical and vocabulary skills alone, 
I would doubt you have any level of higher education. Therefore, you are not qualified to speak on topics such as uh, as diverse as this. The scope and scale to the topic that you are about, about, uh, attempting to undertake in a simple, fucked up, albeit, paragraph is the sort of thing that sociologists, anthropologists, historians, and economists alike would have to form a global panel to discuss. But you think you can do it in a fucking paragraph with no sources cited and clear, implicit, and explicit biases in your writing. You're a fucking joke. And you're going to come in here and try and fucking go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of my people? Some of our community? Are you shitting me? You are so far out of your goddamn depth. This is like a baby trying to fucking, fucking fight Mike Tyson in his prime, son. Sit the fuck down and know your role. Shut up and maybe you'll learn something for once in your life. Jesus Christ, you're pumped full of white replacement theory and fucking Jewish conspiracy shit. How much fucking Alex Jones and fucking Tim Pool and Nick Fuentes and OAN and Pat Robertson have you been like mainlining for like fucking years now, man? You need to step back and like take a breath and realize you are literally full of shit. Oh, is VOD on his channel shows him watching BitChute? Of course it does. BitChute. BitChute and DLive. The hallmark of every fucking wannabe Nazi. Call him Mata, um, zero. Um, thank you for the follow. So do you deny he thinks himself a debate, bro? Oh, he's still so fucking... So far out of pocket, the snooker cue was in her offhand and the main weapon in the other. <laughs> um, we got two. Um, you know what? Watch this. Um, Friedman. Friedman, you're about to get a fucking lesson. You're about to get a lesson. And I'm not, I'm not like talking down or anything. Like you're about to see something. Okay. This is yesterday was what we would call a great show, right? Educational outreach. Um, and we, thank you, Kalimata. Um, this is, this is what we, what we basically do is chud baiting. Right, like this. This is the. Uh, this is one of the other aspects, dude. We've got a variety of shows. Like sometimes we'll be talking about just like books and movies and fucking culture, and sometimes we'll be doing theory and education. And sometimes I'll do de-radicalization. I'll talk to fucking MLs and shit. Right. Right now, right now, we're dealing with chuds and male rights USA just washed in. We know this one. So we've got we've got the Jewish question type. We got the we got the Jewish slash white replacement theory type, and now we've got the male rights USA type. Yes. This is this is gonna be an experience for you, Friedman. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna have an interesting evening tonight. Uh Wither, when was the last D-Rad? Um probably uh, Sam was probably the last D-Rad. It's been a it's been a couple of months, but yes, yeah, Sam would probably be the last one, I'd say. Um Uh, you're here to engage and learn, Friedman. Others are here to spread their um, fucking open. specialness. Um, and some are here to disrupt. Can we, 
Clown, cringe, clown, clown. Cringe, 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 cringe. This is like a back. Karina, this is see this is uh, this is the thing um, like Friedman Genesis like people who are new. Um, this is what you need to do. Actually, I do believe that this is the thing that needs to happen. Um, short of crossing the non-aggression principle, right? Cr short of crossing into violence, the most powerful tool the the actual left has is mockery. It's comedy. It's 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 taking a piss out of something, right? Yeah, he wants his message heard. He wants to spread his word. But what he wants is an amicable spreading of it. He wants somebody to platform him and do the Joe Rogan thing and be like, well, let's hear them out. What I do, if I choose to engage in this sort of thing, is sure, let's hear them out and then make fun of them ruthlessly dissect what they fucking have to say point out how much of a dipshit racist they are right like literally take them down a peg what they want isn't what they're gonna get here what they're gonna get is made fun of because they're dumb they're dumb racism is dumb it's dumb let's just point that out hating somebody because they're black or Hispanic or gay or trans or a woman or a man or disabled is fucking dumb. It's stupid. It's the, it's the hallmark of a tiny mind. Hey, Herodimus. Oh, yes, male rights, assume they're racist. We literally just read his racist screed. There is no assumption, male rights. He literally wrote a piece on Jews bad, black people should be segregated, white Europeans had, uh, the reason white re Europeans did what they did was self, uh, self-acquired reparations that justifies them, uh, in engaging in chattel slavery. Like, we just read this shit. It's not assumed. It's literally written down for us to read. <clears throat> but hey, play your victim card again, male rights. It's really cute when you do it. Yep. Leave when someone tells you who they are. Please. Maya Angelou was fucking brilliant, and that is one of the best pieces of advice that woman ever gave. When someone tells you who they are, fucking believe them. And as typical for male rights, USA, coming in with absolutely no understanding perspective or uh, context for the discussion, but, you know, doing his shit take and replying to himself, which is always a good look.
Oh, well, thank you. You're so generous, Mail Rights. I've never watched Hassan once in my life, so it doesn't affect me. But thank you for your generosity. It is it is so overwhelming. I don't know what we should do, what we will do with it. But you know what? It's so overwhelming your level of generosity that honestly, you should probably leave while we prepare something special for you and come back another time. You see, we, we wouldn't want we wouldn't want the planning to you know ruin the surprise for you. So why don't you go? I don't know. Sexually harass some um, female trans uh, streamer like you have a tendency to do, and come back another time. Yeah. Doc, take care of yourself. It looks like it's going to be one of those nights, doesn't it, Doc? Glad you had a good stream. Thanks for swinging by. I'm glad I took last night's crew over to you and not tonight's crew. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't have taken tonight's crew to you, Doc. Yeah. Take care, though, man. Oh, and I, I love your Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy emotes. I'm just saying. It's my favorite book of all time. Um. <sighs> shrimps. Hey there, shrimps. Um, Chud bashing night. Last night was theory and education and praxis outreach. We got a couple of new members to the community who, you know, really just wanted to engage in the dialectical exercise. We exchanged rhetoric. We had a meeting of the minds. Tonight seems to be chud bashing. Um, so, well, you know, it's Friday night. It's bad movie night. What are you going to do, right? Just left TimCast IRL with uh, Mike. Uh, uh, uh. I don't know who either of those people are, Scott. I know who... Tim Pool is. I had to work for that one too. Um, but yeah. Um, I was going to provoke a conversation about how much a worker who is doing well themselves can indulge in luxuries before it becomes unethical, but this is funnier. Um, sweet. Hey. Famous hand caps. Um, okay. Well, okay. So, um, like authoritarian right wing douchebag talks to neo feudalists. Got it. Okay. Um. <laughs> ah, yes, the Twitch binary. Um. What, um. I'll just see if I had any headlines that would piss them off. Hey, uh, hey, without. It's Chud Night without. It's Chud Night. Um, think about changing the stream title, too. <clears throat> Might as well bait some more out. Hmm. What can we do? What can we do? Eh, I'll leave it as it is for right now. Anyway, so do we still have fucking anti-semi fucking racist segregationist dude? Is he still here fucking spewing his nonsense? I mean, I can see fucking this genius is still here. Um, okay. Uh, talk about, oh, Viva, that's right. <clears throat> um, the census showed the white population of America shrink for the first time in this last census. The white people are being replaced. Oh, no. Of course he is, Friedman. 
Of course he is. They never operate in good faith. They expect you to answer all of your uh, all of your uh, the questions they have for you. They will answer barely any of yours, and if they do, they will fucking pivot so hard that I usually my shtick is I tell them, "Oh, do you want some tape for your ankle? I wouldn't want you to blow it out when you pivot that hard." Yeah, they don't operate in good faith, and that's the thing is you have to under, uh, you have to be able to have like a community. I I presume everybody's operating in good faith until the community shows me otherwise. And if you have a really good set of regulars and a good community built up, what they will do is they will elicit a reaction out of these people very quickly and that way you can judge whether they're here in good faith or not. Uh, here in good faith or not. And they aren't. So, yeah. <laughs> That's a new one. That's a new one. You're atheist god. Thank you for the follow. Um, I just got accused of virtue signaling to the gay community and that I'm not really gay. That's a first. Love you. <laughs> hey, um, who said that? Male rights. Male rights. Do you want to see photo? Do you want to see video of me getting railed up the ass by a dude? I have that. Or maybe me sucking a cock. Or sucking dick and getting railed up same time like what level of proof do you want because i got it now be on yeah now i can be honest i just suck dick to virtue signal to the lgbtq community that's right That's not much of a better take, atheist. Um. Yeah, Krusty, go for it. Fucking go for it. Yes, ha hashtag exposed. Fucking hashtag canceled. Um. <laughs> that is amazing. I just got accused of virtue signaling to the gay community by using uh, by painting my fingernails pink. Should, how, how about this mail rights? How about the um how um how about the uh, how about the dude that I spent uh, Monday night with this week that like railed me for like two and a half hours straight? We took a break into the shower and went some more there, and then we did another session in the morning. Right? Would you like to speak to him? Would 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 his testimony clear some of this up? I even, he, he did me so good fucking mail rights that I was worn out after like session number two. And I even, I even cuddled with him for like maybe 10 minutes, which is a long time for someone like me. Okay. A romantic, not a cuddler. The fuck off me. Um, he even fucked a cuddle out of me, man. Scott, there was a fair amount of that too, but no, it, it had started down below the week prior and I can feel it literally move up my esophageal tract. It's a fucking nightmare when it happens, man. <clears throat> Did you call him a fucking fairy? <laughs> I got a cute. 
used to fucking virtue signaling with pink fingernails. Dude, tonight has been, honestly, between fucking segregationist Jewish question, white replacement theory, fucking slavery was justified guy. Um, and you're not actually gay. You're just virtue signaling to the LGBTQ community. I don't, I don't know how y'all are going to top this shit. Yeah, redacted. No. Um. You really think that's a gotcha? Wow. It must be confusing in your brain, Newman. It must be really fucking nightmarish, too. To have that much, like, fear of the other going on in your brain. It would be kind of miserable. Oh, God. Now I'm starting to pity him. Uh, I turned the corner, everybody. I'm starting to feel bad for Newman. I'm pitying him now. Ugh. I always hate when that happens. Um, well, sorry. Just having to handle business behind the scenes. <clears throat> um, I'm finding it hard to type with my pitchfork in my hands. Um, nonsense. I'm not still on. I came back on at 5:30. Um. Yeah, Viva. First warnings are going out. Um, 5.30 p.m. Like, an hour and a half ago. <laughs> Nonsense. An hour and a half ago. Um. Public. These aren't women's clothes. They're my clothes because I bought them with my money. Exactly, public. Do they want? Do you want a civic discussion or a civilized discussion, Newman? Dude, your your grammar and vocabulary. Are you? Do you speak English as your is your primary first language? Are you a native English speaker? Because if you're not, then I'm going to stop making fun of your grammar. Because if you're if English is your second or tertiary language, then it's great. But if English is your primary language, man. Um, you got the yips fucking nonsense. That's so fun. Oh, um, Leo, uh, somebody will come in and say I look like, um, Tony Hawk. If somebody says I look like Tony Hawk, you got a you got that square. It happens a lot more than you may think. If you don't see it, don't worry about it. I don't really get it either. But like, seriously, it's like triple digits have said it. Yeah, it's a thing. So it's enough to be on the bingo uh, um, bingo card. Well, 
public. I mean, I'd have to look him up again. I, I don't. Okay, so public. First, you have to understand. I have um, partial facial blindness. Yeah. So like faces for me are kind of tough. Okay, I kind of get it. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah, that Tony Hawk Kalamata. Um, do I have to confess? Okay, so um, without, where did you get the hat? Um, guy who, a dom slash top who fucked me a few times, wanted me in, um, a fitted cap. So he put me in a fitted cap. It's that simple. <laughs> it's where it came from. There's the, yeah. Um, yeah, he wanted to, he was, you know, yeah, he wanted to, he wanted to fuck a boy in a, a fitted cap. So, you know, like, do you have a cap? I'm like, no. He's like, fine, I'll get you one. Cap. Nonsense. I've got the energy, man. I've got the energy. I got that look. Um, I don't even know what the fuck that was, but it was something, wasn't it? Oh. I kind of want to talk to somebody. I kind of want to bring somebody on air, but I'm not bringing, like, you know, crazy on air. That's not a thing I do. Um... But I do kind of want to talk to somebody. I don't know. I may open it up here. Yeah, why not? What's up, Swede? Oh, not too much. Ooh. Oh, you're quiet. Just FYI. Oh, am I? Now you're loud. Um... Hey, and if Genesis is still here, um, I don't know if Genesis, you fucking lazy duck fuck, uh, if you're still here, this, this is the person. This is the person. I don't, they had a, some question for me. We were talking co -op. Oh, I remember what it was. If Genesis is still here, I can ask the question. Um, what can be done from a sort of legal, um, uh, a, a legal or policy setting, um, standard? Um, as far as the, cause they're going to business, uh, business school. Um, and they're really, um, it was funny. Like they're, they're having that, uh, come to Jesus moment where they're like, I'm pretty sure like I'm a hardcore leftist, right? Like they're going through business school and they're having this dawn, this realization. Like, I don't think I agree with any of this stuff they're teaching me. Um, and they're, they're sort of, they're becoming focused on cooperatives and setting up cooperatives and what it would take to make setting up cooperatives easier in this nation. And that's really the focus of Genesis's uh, question was, is there legal or um, financial policy changes that we could implement and or change in this country that would make it more advantageous or easier to implement worker-owned cooperatives it's really easy right now <laughs> um, mutual aid co-ops exist mutual aid companies exist within the tax code 
uh, farmers cooperatives and several others uh, already. I mean, most of these already exist. Is there? And if they don't, you can you can jury rig a C corporation to be that way with two share classes, where one everybody gets one vote, and then you can do the profit sharing however you want with the class B shares. Are there are there any um, <clears throat> initial hurdles that we could clear out of the way to make it even easier that uh, someone may not be aware of, such as me? Or is it pretty <sighs> much clear sailing? It's pretty much clear sailing. You just have to have good advice from a corporate attorney okay. who knows how to like navigate the system. I mean, it's, it's the bureaucracy that is the barrier to everybody. It doesn't matter what type of corporation you want to set up. The bureaucracy is pretty much uh, opaque as it can be. Okay. Um, then I will relay that information or I will point him them to some point in this fucking um, VOD. The, there, the, yeah, there are several sections in Section 500, which we all should know is se section 500 is the um, not-for-profit side of things. Um, so 501c3s are your typical not-for-profit charities. Um, so if you look in that area, the tax code, you'll actually find quite a bit in there that just people just don't talk about. But if you find a good corporate attorney that works in the 500s, um, you, you'll learn, you, you'll get quite the education. Um, uh, without, um, <clears throat> Swede is, let me get this correct, um, economics and finance or is it economics and business? Economics, finance, economics and finance master's level currently pursuing PhD in economics, correct? Correct. There we go. Um, so there you go. Um, without. Yeah, not poli sci and not really a business student either. Um, but yes, my undergrad was business admin. There you go. So also a business student to boot. <laughs> oh, you're 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 just a, a lethal combination of shit. <laughs> yeah, I, ha I have a BSBA, uh, Bachelor of Science of Business Administration. There you go. Um, and Bobby's got a master's level in business too, if you need it. <laughs> so toss it in the pile. <laughs> oh, fuck it. Eh? Dude, it was such a good show last night. It's not surprising that we had the fucking, you know, the dregs of society wash up on our shores. Um, when I think of you two, I think of good conversation. Oh, thank you, Cricks. Um, yeah, it was, dude, last night was great. Fucking outreach, meeting of the minds, introducing people who had, hadn't been introduced to, like, anarchistic topics before and, like, receptive. And the dialectic was, was you know, it was really rich last night. So, of course, today. Like, if we're going to close out the week, let's close out the week with fucking, like, the Jews will not replace us and shit like that. It's like, oh, for fuck's sake. How many tiki torches does Newman own? <laughs> Uh, it's so, so the question I wanted to ask earlier was like someone who's doing very well for themselves wink wink is <laughs> like say looking for you know their lease is up in their car and they're, they're looking for a new one and they have like you know they can splurge a little bit but how much splurging is too much before you're like you know some of that should probably go to the less fortunate I'm I'm not getting on the philosophical argument of you should never you know have anything yourself until everyone's out of poverty. You know I get saving for retirement. I get yeah own your house. Do you need a five thousand square foot house though? Is kind of where where's the line of luxuries think, for yourself? I don't I don't know where the line is. I, I, I honestly I don't I don't know. It's a good question. Um but I don't think there's a good answer. You know, because like my wife and I were sitting there talking. We're like, you know, 
a Jeep Grand Cherokee is a good middle of the road car for what our family needs right now. But I could easily afford a Range Rover. That seems a little much. I think, you know, I think, oh God, this is terrible. I think the old money approach um, would probably be a good standard. It shouldn't be gauche. It, it shouldn't be in your face. Yeah, sure. When you turn the corner and you do, you go up the winding road and you finally see the estate they live on, you're like, oh shit. Like these fuckers have cash. But if you see them in town, it, it doesn't read. They're not overt about it. They're not wearing fucking gi diamonds everywhere. They don't have, you know, fucking giant fur coats on and shit. They're beat. They're where they're driving beat up old, like two decade old vehicles and shit. Like that old money approach seems to be a solid litmus for this sort of thing. Like it just shouldn't be gauche. It shouldn't be nouveau riche. It should fit in with whatever the societal norm for your area is if, if if you live in an area that is riddled with abject poverty then yeah you shouldn't be driving a mercedes motherfucker get a toyota camry and make sure you spend some fucking cash on the local economy lift some fuckers up out of poverty with that excess if you live in an upper middle class white neighborhood then yeah you probably could you know you could sneak by with a fucking something you know um but yeah i think it shouldn't stand out i think it shouldn't have unwarranted attention brought upon you um and so yeah it should fit like whatever the sort of middle of the road for your community and your like social group is and anything above that is excessive No, old money doesn't plaster their name on an airplane, Patrona. <laughs> no, and they don't have a university named after them either. They might have a building at a university named after them. Yeah, it's it, yeah. I think the I think the old money approach on this one might actually be the the decent litmus for it. That like it. I, I know I keep saying this word gauche, but I mean it's it. Yeah, it should be like that. It should be you know don't don't be overt in your wealth. And, you know, whatever you have left over from not being overt in having that wealth should probably be folded back into something more, more worthwhile, more socially conscious. Okay. It's, yeah. I'm wondering why Rev thinks Grand Cherokees are shit. Oh, the like, new one. The, about them the that new I don't know. Yeah, the new ones. Like Jeep took a turn in quality the last like few years. Jeep owners have this thing that basically like the older Jeeps are fucking so, like if you had like a '94 Grand Cherokee or something like that, um, he'd probably adore it. But if you're talking like a 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee, uh, Cherokee, yeah, most of the Jeep owners are gonna be like, it's shit. Well, I'm gonna lease and it's gonna be under warranty, so. Yeah, it's 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 a Jeep owner thing. Um, being out in this part of the, the world, I know a few of them. Oh, no, if it has the word grand, it's a POS. So you're one of those. Okay, got it, Rev. Like, I, 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 I see where you're coming from. Got it. Um, it's okay. Yeah, it's it's the the uh, it's the um, softened model. I will never buy a Wrangler because that is today's like yuppie mobile. It is today's Harley. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's that bad. I, you know, I, I, I run a, a Toyota Highlander, uh, 2019 Toyota Highlander, um, right now. Um, so far so good. You know, Toyota's taken a turn in a couple of places, but it so far it's working. So. Yeah, I was looking at the Telluride too. That looks like a nice one. Kia has really taken a turn for the better from what I've heard. Yeah, I will never drive or ride in something that is literally the, the killed in action initialism. I just can't do it. <laughs> <clears throat> it's, it, 
it's it's literally it, the definition of a vehicle is an uh, is action like it's it's a, it's an active item and you come along and say like yeah it's killed in action i'm sorry i'm good i just i can't i can't that that shit will be in my head the whole time <clears throat> uh, but yeah it's it's either that or i just go buy you know just go lease a camry for like 280 bucks a month and I mean, and, honest, and go give like 500 bucks a month to food without food, not bombs. <laughs> I, I mean, do that. Um, but honestly, I like having the SUV. I do. Um, well, and with two toddlers, having the SUV is it's, it's going to come almost a necessity. Yeah, it's going to come into play. Um, so, I mean, but yeah, like whatever, whatever suits your needs that is socially appropriate. And then use the excess for society what you know for the causes that you believe in yeah i was you know i was thinking about it i was trying to bring it back to a personal level but you know i go i i go into other things like you know suburbia with six hundred thousand dollar houses that are 3500 square feet for a family of three or even dinks and you know all these excesses that we have in our society of consumption that we are just consuming ourselves to death is, <laughs> you know? And so, you know, what, at what point do you go? I think you got too much. I, I think, I think a lot of us have too much. Um, I used to, I don't anymore. I mean, I'm sharing this house now. It's driving me insane. But, um, you know, yeah. And then you look at people like, I don't know, I'm just going to pick a name out of a fucking hat. Jake Paul. Right? Like, I've seen his fucking house. It's like, what? No, you don't need that. Um, yeah, vehicle auctions can be a really good deal, Chris. Um, for sure. Um... Yeah, there's, there's, dude, there's, there's a house around the corner for me that sold for like, I don't know, 4.6 or something like that. Um, it's got a couple of tennis courts. It's got a basketball court. It's got the pool. It's got the hot tub. It's got the backyard. Right, this is, this is in, this is in Nevada, right? Like this is, I mean, come on, like, right? This is, it's, it's done up well, and they don't have kids. The people who bought it don't have kids. They're not physically active. They just wanted a big house with like the accoutrement to show off because their house has basketball courts and tennis courts and a pool and a spa and like a little putting green and shit like that. They wanted it as a status symbol. They're not even using it. It's just sitting there. So, yeah, yeah, I, I, I see a fair amount of that, too. Um, the Mormon family across the way from me, the mom drives a Maserati. I, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't understand. Like, but OK, so like when, when we talk about like what's appropriate for the like, say that either the neighborhood or the or the subdivision or whatever you live on you know there are areas in omaha where a range rover is that <laughs> i don't live there uh and never will because those people are pretentious as fuck um but yeah i mean it's it's i i even think like those neighborhoods are just gaudy they are they are um, there's a few, I'm luckily not in one, like she's, she's the standout. The majority of vehicles around here are average middle-class vehicles, right? Toyotas, Jeeps, fucking Fords and, you know, Chevys and shit like that, right? Um, but yeah, um, I also think if we're going to discuss the excesses, um, Are we, uh, you know what, um,
decision. Um, so the so I'm sort of surrounded, right? Like over there, that way. I have one Mormon family. Over here, I have another Mormon family. Over here, I have another Mormon family. Right? I'm kind of surrounded. Um, the ones right here bought a, you know, the like shuttle vans that you see the airport, like hotel drivers and shit like that, that they use. They bought one of those be to do their school run because they've got that many kids. And never, I've lived here for hmm, 10 years. Um, I've never known them not to have a baby. It's always a different baby, I'm sure. Right? Like, the, the fucking kids are growing up. Right? But there's always a little fucking kid. Because they're always cranking out a new one. Right? Like, if we're going to talk excesses, how many fucking kids do you need? Right? Like, I don't, I don't know how many they're up to. 12, 14, something in that territory. And just to get, like, the school-age ones to school, they needed a fucking transit van. Right? Like, this is, this is, you know, there's excesses like, oh, shit, you bought yourself a fucking Maserati. And then there's excesses like, hey, we had to buy a transit van because we've got, like, a, a baseball team's worth of kids. I think that, you know, the conversation of excesses extends past just the, um, the sort of perceived wealth or the sort of, uh, high end, high ticket items. I, I think we need to start looking at it realistically as a society and being like, Hey, you know, there's different types of excesses and some of us are indulging in other ways. True. Uh, Fabian, what's mm -hmm. wrong with a bunch of kids? What's wrong with 14 kids? What is this fucking 18, 12? Are you, are they running a farm? Like, do they need, like, do they need farm hands to take care of the, to plow the fields and shit? <coughs> They're a suburban middle-class family in Henderson, Nevada, for fuck's sake. They don't need 14 goddamn kids. Like, it's, it's kind of absurd. Yeah, it's kind of absurd. What's immoral about having a large family? Oh, the environmental cost alone as a first, as a North American first worlder, the environmental cost for every one of those kids is multiplied hugely. So there's, there's some issue for sure. There's some consumption issue. A pretty large one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, go go look at the per capita CO2 causation of the United States versus, say, India. I think we're like 17 times. God, you're good, Leo. Yeah. Like, we produce more CO2 per person than all of India does. And we have a third third of the population? It's, fourth of the population? You know, it's That's that's almost what uh, reducto ad absurdum that you just engaged in, just off the top of my head. Like, come on, Scott. There's a dis there's a valid discussion there, and you just took it to well. We might as well just all die off as a species. Yeah, that's an argument from the extremes. I don't accept that. Yeah, like no, fuck that. There's valid conversation to be had in a world where uh, resources are finite due to the fucked logistic systems and economic systems <clears throat> um, that we are engaging in and how those resources are expended in the current model and then pumping out fucking 14 kids. Yeah, there's a fucking conversation there to be had that that's irresponsible. Um... Journal of uh, Psychology published in a, a new study. 
Anxiety disorder symptoms are more common with those who have left-wing political views. They studied Great Britain for this study, but you can be sure it probably carries over. People with clinical symptoms of anxiety disorders tend to express higher concern about things like economic inequality and environmental concerns and these sorts of things. Um, so yeah, it, it literally the left is more anxiety ridden than the right. Which we knew, we knew, but it's always nice to see these sorts of studies. It's like, yeah, they are disgusted by everything and they're governed by their amygdala. So fear responses are huge for them. And over here on the left, we're basically squirrels who are constantly fucking freaking out that the bird may swoop down and nail us at any time. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, let's see. Oh, and do you see the the chip shortage um, for Toyota? Toyota's cutting. Oh, they they finally have a chip shortage because they were stocked up for they're, a long time. They're cutting global production by forty percent because of their chip shortage. Their um, their just in time is studied like in every bit of business class everywhere. Uh, like people, it, it's like required reading Toyota's just in time manufacturing process. The problem was, is a lot of people didn't look at the minor details of how they did it and what they actually, like there are certain things that they don't just in time, like they stocked up heavy on chips because they were like, well, we can only get them from two suppliers and the logistics to get them here uh, can be disrupted very easily. So we need those on hand at all times we need at least like three four whatever whatever they were doing i think it was like three or four months worth um but on the other hand paint was like we have 19 suppliers and they're all like down the road from us mm -hmm. we can just in time that uh so toyota was one of the few that was very insulated from the chip shortage for a long time because of their thinking on that Oh, oh, thank you for that. A lovely, uh, nuanced, um, uh, oh yeah. Um, yeah, Leo, like, um, hi, hi Leo's little brother. Like what's up? Uh, hi, my name's Kai. Uh, this guy up here, his name's Irish sweet. Um, welcome to the channel. Um, yeah. Um, who was I? Oh yeah, plurality. So let me get this straight. Baby farts are now uh, now at fault for global warming. Just to clarify, thank you for that. Well, uh, well and truly nuanced uh, entry into the discussion. Your rhetorical device will uh, surely be noted um, that you are operating in good faith, and I'm sure chat will treat you as such moving forward. Anyway, um, what do you think of the um, what do you think of the um, the OnlyFans thing? Um, you know the meme, I don't remember the, the guy, the actor's name, but the black guy peeking around the tree, like, yes, rubbing his hands together, like, yeah, can't wait for something. That's just four dot fans. Yeah, we talked about him last night. <laughs> That's that, that is just four dot fans looking at the situation, going, I know where all that money's going. Yeah, yeah, we talked that, about him that, last night. Fansly, fan, was it fansly? There, there's like three other providers. Uh, Someone will, th this is where capitalism, or I shouldn't say capitalism, this is where the open market will just step in and just provide the solution. Um, capitalism be damned. Uh, Scott, chances are you're going to talk about the BBC, um, uh, uh, the BBC investigation into OnlyFans and the fact that their credit card processors were about to pull them. Um, because that's, I mean, that's the deeper context is basically they were protecting fucking child pornography. Yeah. So it was because of the BBC investigation that the credit card, the credit card processors were made aware of those infractions and that they made demands of them that are near impossible to meet. It was because basically there was a series of child uh, of uh, accounts that were propagating. Hey, shrimps! Thank you for the uh, the sub. Um, by the way, um, Leo, congratulations. Um, basically, BBC went looking, and OnlyFans had been protecting a series of child pornography accounts um, because they were making a decent amount of money, 
and they weren't doing anything about it because they rely on community moderation. And so the credit card processors caught wind of this and were about to pull their processing. And the stipulation is that uh, the stipulation that I saw go around was that they needed every live stream monitored and moderated every second of it, which would have been impossible to do. Um, so basically they decided little bit versus none of it, right? We're shooting ourselves in the foot. But we were about to get executed. So if it means taking a bullet to the foot versus actually being drawn and quartered, then we'll take the bullet to the foot. And so that seems to be the decision they made as an organization is we'll just shut it down and we'll make what we can make out of it. Um, because, yeah, they were about to get raked over the coals. Um, so, yeah, that, that's sort of the greater context to the OnlyFans thing. They didn't just pull a Tumblr. They didn't just like, oh shit, you know, let's not do sex stuff. It was, we fucked up so badly that there's about to be a BBC international article released on us saying how we actively protected child pornography rings because they were making a fair amount of money for us. And that caused credit card processors to sit up and <clears throat> you're not using our service. Um, I do think that leads into a conversation, though, about a duopoly between MasterCard and Visa basically being able to dictate who is in business. Because we've seen that before, that MasterCard and Visa can just basically go in and say... You're done. No processing from us. And it's effectively a, a death knell to your business, uh, your business model. So I think there's a discussion to be had about that. It's pretty dangerous for a society to be controlled. And that this is the world. I mean, MasterCard... Visa, and to some extent, American Express basically control the world as far as payment processing. Yeah. Yeah. What they say goes straight up. Um, In Diners Club. <laughs> <laughs> but don't forget Discover. Yeah, I mean, Discover tries. I mean, get on them. They try. They're adorable. They're like the they're like the uh, the libertarian or green party. You're like, oh, that's right. They're a thing. I forget about that sometimes. Um, like I don't even think Discover is like taken at most of the places I go. <laughs> it's just like, where would I use it? I I'm sure in Vegas it's probably accepted a lot more places, but here it is not. Um, Karina asked. Um, I believe in national banks as an intermediate stage, but would that fuck us more? Uh, national banks has a lot of connotations. What do you mean, Karina? There you go, Karina. Um, like nationalized? Do you mean the postal system bank? Do you how mean... Do you feel, how do you feel about the postal system bank? Because I've always been in favor of that. Um, and then there's also the fact of how the ACH system works, which is through the Fed, which is the government anyway. So all the bank processing is done through the Fed. Like when you write a check, it goes through the Federal Reserve. Oh, Jesus. All right. Well, Huckleberry Hound, we have 26 ordained ministers in my community already including myself, who has been an ordained minister for uh, 18 years now or so. 
So um, thank you for your message of Jesus loves you all. Um, we're well equipped as a community to um, handle our own theology. Um, yeah, I, I've always I thought the 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 um, yeah Zippy we're twenty six. We may actually have more. Hang on, let me check the list. Um, twenty seven. I'm sorry, we have twenty seven. Um, hey, Caboose, you missed a bunch of shit, Caboose. Man, did you miss a bunch of shit, Caboose? Um, yeah, I've always thought the, the, the post office operating as a bank um, was a good idea. Well, they, they wouldn't be a full-service bank like, say, your traditional national charter bank would be. Uh the postal system bank would be for your depository needs. Uh, it wouldn't be a place to go get a mortgage on your house, though, I think is the way that they have that set up. Which is, a little bit different. Which is fair. I mean, the, the fact of the matter is, is most people, the, the, the stuff that oppresses most people that is, you know, that sort of uh, finance desert territory is that sort of being able to cash your paycheck and easily deposit money and not have a fucking, you know, Bank of America charging you overdraft fees for overdraft fees sort of shit. Or or you only have 25 bucks in your account right now. We're going to charge you 35 for a low account balance. Yeah, that sort of shit. Like we could we could get Oh, rid now of we now we got you on an overdraft charge. <laughs> yeah, we could we could get rid of a lot of that shit using that and that that's that's always to me struck me as a as a good idea yeah that's that's very positive uh the one part that it misses though is that mortgage part because i mean realistically you and i know how much minority communities have been could could we discriminated against could we not um uh, for sleep easy like a credit union a co-op well uh, okay first here's here's one of the reasons to have the, the the post office doing that is because their penetration into rural areas already like if you did some other structure zippy thank you for the gift sub and congratulations redacted if you did some other infrastructure you'd have to build that infrastructure with the post office they're already there we already we already put the thing way up in the hauler Right, like we, we already have a fairly extensive postal network uh, of post offices and that sort of thing. So it would be an easy way to reach some of those marginalized communities. Now, back to that point, Swede, would there not be a way to create that? I mean, that doesn't seem like that would be that complicated of a thing to just strap to it. Uh, it it's more complicated than you think. Uh, based purely on the fact of do you want the postal service to be packaging them up loans and then selling them out well, to the CD market? I'm not even I, saying like the postal service has to do it, but if we use the facilities of like, if we went that extra step and created a sort of postal system based um, depository system, uh, you know, some sort of finance mechanism that marginalized communities can access easier, could we not then use that as sort of a facility to get access to some other thing? Maybe it's not the post office handling it. Maybe it's some other entity. But since we have this finance entity already in the community, can't they be the the sort of spigot for it? Yeah. It, well, the plan right now is to use the uh, direct to the Fed itself for a mortgage system. Uh, that that's the plans in place right now, and that's why I'm kind of hesitant to to name the postal service itself as as the entity to use. But because the Fed can just go in and lend money, <laughs> by by moving a zero, by moving a decimal place, you know, on the on the balance sheet, they, they have that power. They can be like, oh, we need to lend you know another billion dollars out so people can buy houses. Move the decimal point. Um, and there it is. Scott, I'm fine with that as one thing. If we wanted to do that, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. Here's here's my issue. God, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get really fucking like geeky here for a second, right? I2P is my ideal situation. Um if you're not aware of I2P folks, well, 
welcome to my world. I2P is a secure sort of sub network system. It is a secured end to end encrypted uh, onion routed communications platform that is self contained within the internet. It has messaging, it has email, it has web servers, it has all that sort of stuff, but it doesn't have exit nodes. You go in, but everything's contained in that space. It is secured, it is encrypted, it is anonymous. And it has all of those sorts of function uh, capabilities to plug in and utilize, right? This is, and it is distributed, truly distributed. Everybody who runs I2P contributes to running I2P, right? This is my ideal situation. The, the barrier to entry for technology such as I2P needs to be lowered. That way, um, Excel Tor is, uh, I'll get to that for in a second, Excel. Um, the barrier to entry to technologies like I2P needs to be lowered. That way, the rest of people can start to run this sort of technology because what we need is a lower barrier to entry to these high-level uh, anonymous, um, anonymously routed and end-to-end -end encrypted technologies. That way, we can bypass all of that sort of shit to start with. All of the data is distributed across the network. The bandwidth is distributed across the network. The, the users and the, the users of the system make the system run, right? So you can bypass things like Twitter or the postal service social media. The first amendment becomes a non-issue in these sorts of spaces because the truth of the matter is, is you don't know who's posting what and where from where and X, X Y, and Z. There's no way to censor them. And if you censor them, if you're running something and somebody posts something that on your system that you don't like and you censor them, they are free to spin up their own shit in an instant. Right? Anybody could anybody could be running a website with very little overhead within within a couple of hours on on a system like that, right? It's very difficult to censor somebody in that sort of scenario, so it it lowers that your freedom of speech talk. Um, Excel, <clears throat> Tor is, um, oh no, no, uh, Caboose, you'd need web servers. Um, I, I, if you ever, um, uh, Karina, the answer is yes, sometimes. Um, so Excel, Tor is an acronym for the Onion Router. Onion Routing is this sort of multi-layered routing protocol that ensures that you can hand packets off so the origination and the destination aren't, uh, aren't necessarily aware of each other's location, right? Um, the problem with Tor is that Tor operates on ClearNet systems <clears throat> Tor is a subset darknet system operating on clearnet systems. So if you maintain control over exit nodes, which is where the data leaves the Tor network to go to bbc.com or fucking twitter.com and then come back in, if you control that exit node, there are methodologies for manipulating the network, shall we say. Um, there are also a couple of different ways to do man in the middle attacks, and there's a few uh, a few ways to subvert it even further using JavaScript, which is why the Tor browser by default loads no script. Um, so it is an onion routing system, but it is just that, and it is placed on top of the internet, whereas I2P is just sort of a self-contained bubble in the internet. I2P also uses onion routing, but it also uses end-to-end -end encryption and it uses a number of other things that ensure that since you don't have exit nodes and a variety of other things that uh, get implemented in Tor, that you have less security uh, potential for security manipulations, man-in-the-middle attacks, or breaches occurring therein. It's also self-signed and self-updated from inside the network. Um, which is something that's really interesting. So programmers and coders and the people who work on I2P can remain anonymous while working in the I2P space. You can actually help to improve and code I2P from inside I2P and self-sign inside I2P and push out updates to all of the users of I2P, thus allowing high-end programmers and cryptographic experts access to uh, working on the project a certain level of anonymity that they wouldn't get otherwise. Um, so, like, 
this is this is sort of like this is this is one of my pet technologies. I I much prefer I2P over Tor. Tor allows somebody to access something that they wouldn't otherwise be able to access, right? It allows somebody behind the great inner uh, great firewall um, to you know VPN out and uh, VPN and Tor out and maintain anonymity that way, right? Whereas I2P is an anonymous sphere. It's a bubble unto itself. And in that space, you have encryption, you have anonymity, you have messaging, you have web services, you have all of these sorts of things that you expect out of the internet, only it's a completely distributed network on top of all of that. That's the ideal. And if we head towards that rather than, you know, postal service, social media, then we have less centralized failure points. You have less centralized control points. Um, it, it, it is, you know, Let's see if it even addresses it. No, it doesn't. All right. Just making sure. Um, I didn't know Highlanders looked this nice. Hmm. They're a good looking vehicle. Honestly. Uh, it's and they're really nice inside. <clears throat> you can fold down the back seats flat. Um and yeah, like I can I can lay down in it. Like that was one of the first things I did. It was like, can I lay down in this thing? Like straight up. Yeah. Um how do you think I2P can overcome Metcalf's law, though? I mean, uh, Metcalf's is what? Uh, telecommunications proportional to the square of... Oh, God. It's the square of the number of users. The value of a telecommunications network is proportional to the square of the number of users on the network, I believe is Metcalf's law. So, one, well, let's look up. Uh, we'll, we'll see if we we'll see if I can get you a number. Um, Yeah, I can't get you an actual number, um, which is a good thing. You're looking at probably at present 55,000 distributed computers on a global scale um, for, I, uh, for I2P at present. Um, so small by any means, but bigger than a lot of shit, actually. Um, so, <clears throat> let's see. A, a Metcalf value of um, 3.025 billion. Now, I'm not even original. I don't even know how Metcalf's value actually is, is graded, but um well but see here's the thing uh joey i was there for when bbs's were nothing you know right the internet was nothing it was nothing it was a fucking drop in the bucket of global telecommunications um, and now it's the predominant telecommunications network. I remember when bulletin boards or I remember when BBSs were the norm. I remember when Usenet was the norm. I remember when FTPs were the primary mechanism of file transfers on the internet. 
I remember when HTML really fucking started taking off for, for people to start using. I remember when um, MySpace like became a de facto normative value. I remember when Facebook took over. I remember when the internet started getting centralized. I remember when Reddit fucking came up and took over from Dig. Right? I remember when Dig was the de facto front page of the internet, but then Reddit took over. Right? I remember when all these sorts of uh, these these de facto systems became usurped, and it happens like that on the internet. It's astounding how quickly it happens when it happens, and when it does, it's fascinating to watch in real time. And it's happened dozens and dozens and dozens of times since the, the the creation of like what we would consider the modern internet in the early 90s right so yeah right now it's it's not much but you know what people are growing more and more tired of their privacy being taken advantage of and this is what I mean about lowering the barrier of entry to entry. Right now, I2P is a niche technology. It's something that people like me are aware of. It's it's something that somebody who has a level of technical skill set can can leverage, right? VPNs used to be the thing that that same category, but the barrier to entry to VPNs was lowered. It was created in app form. Just come sign up on the fucking website, download the app, push a single button job done nothing for you to worry about if somebody does that implementation that style of implementation for some a technology similar to i2p that is truly distributed that makes it that easy to access that lowers the barrier to entry to that level that shit could be overnight and you wouldn't even fucking know it it would just be here i've seen it happen before Uh um Yep, it it could take over faster than Zoom did with web meetings. It honestly that that's the thing. Um Yeah, where'd Skype go? <laughs> just like that um skype is skype is microsoft teams now that's oh, i just yeah. got absorbed oh yep Gemma. uh would i say that i2p and www okay so here's the thing i2p actually utilizes uh many of the technologies of the world wide web like it would could they coexist and be popular simultaneously yeah yeah they could um, there's going to be a speed handicap with a lot of the I2P stuff um, for at least the initial portion of it until there's like mass adoption. Um, so, you know, yeah, there definitely would be room for it. And also, like, unless, I, unless that sort of technology and I2P-like technology took over entirely, there would be like most of the web, most of the like corporate web would want to exist on the clear net. But most of the social media, most of the, the user communications platforms would want to exist on I2P. Email, messaging, boards, all of the stuff that we use to express ourselves would move over to I2P pretty readily, pretty quickly. If, if you know, I mean, yeah, that's how I would see it, at least. Um, I can find out. Uh... Two thousand and ten, Joey. Two thousand and ten. Dig redesigned itself and talked some shit, and Reddit was 
the de facto the next year. Um... Yeah. Kurashiku, yes. Oh, I miss the days of Aaron. He was good people. He was good people. Scott, you do realize it's like the fifth or sixth most visited website on the internet, and it's more than just lefties there. Like, <laughs> you do know that the Donald was one of the biggest subreddits ever on there. <laughs> yeah, like, talk about confirmation bias, literally written down in text for us. Like, dude, it's like the sixth most visited website on the internet. If you want to see the biggest snowflake subreddit, go to conservative. Oh, it is that they have flared only subjects that you have to have verified flair that you are a conservative to be able to comment. <laughs> um, right wingers are so snowflakey. And cap subreddit is also another one where they just devolve into the Jewish question. I was just say and caps private now, like these days. Um, yeah, they, they went private. They, they literally couldn't handle outsiders. I'm not kidding you. The and cap subreddit could handle outsiders. They fucking went private. Um, <laughs> that is so antithetical to what they profess to. It is. Um, yes. Um, Astral, I'm aware of Matrix. Um, it is decentralized, but not distributed, which is my issue with it. It's um, so here. Let me let me get y'all. Uh, let me get you, get y'all on. Here's the difference. Okay. This is the difference in, decentral in centralized, decentralized, and distributed. Okay. So over here on the left, this is Twitter, Twitch, Reddit. Okay. This is Matrix. Okay. So they've got individual hub servers that people or organizations are running. And then you've got all these nodes. So they're interconnected. There is no usual single central point of failure, though on this one, they do have a central point of failure, which is a bad fucking design on this uh, on this graph. But usually there would be an interconnection here. There would be an interconnection here, like you see up here. You see how these two are interconnected and they use this third one? This is the traditional decentralized model right here. So if this central node goes offline, these two nodes can continue talking. And if you did this here and here, then all of these nodes could continue talking, even if like, you know, one of these nodes went off offline, right? And then there's the distributed model, which is what I2P is. And this, this is perfection. This is the ideal, okay? This, this, is, this is what we strive for in cybernetic theory, in, in uh, you know, a lot of network, uh, uh, network uh, theorists really prefer this model because I could pull this one and this one and this one and this guy over here that wanted to talk to this uh, talk to this guy up here that normally would just route like this could then go bump 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 still an intelligent net, uh, routing protocol which most bridge routing protocols are intelligent in that manner can find their way around this no problem so you can lose 
I mean, a significant portion of your nodal sets and still routing around your network still functions just fine. Distributed is the optimal solution. Well then, here's Scott. Centralized, decentralized, distributed. This is, these are the ideals. And so, yeah, um, matrix is decentralized. While it's a step in the correct direction, it's not this, which is problematic. Um, it, it's still not the best solution. The best solution lies over here with decentralization, uh, with uh, distribution. Um, decentralization is just sort of the stopgap methodology to move away from um, the sort of Twitter model. So, yes, I, I, I it's better, it's better, it's better, um, but it's not best. Cisco doesn't own the lines. Cisco runs the lines. Their their technology runs most of the internet to be truthful. Um the the BGP protocol um that is pre predominantly found on Cisco edge routers is basically responsible for a huge portion of the internet's traffic yeah cisco's gear runs the internet to a huge extent they are the internet to a huge extent um but they don't own the lines most of the lines are owned by either governments or multinational telecommunications firms or cooperatives there bet thereof between where they they organize together and verizon and at&t you know, share the cost of a transoceanic line, that sort of shit, right? But yeah, Cisco doesn't own the lines. Um, I like Cisco as a company. Yeah, I can't imagine why. Um, <laughs> yeah. I have no bias whatsoever. I don't know what you're talking about. His fucking cousin founded Cisco, everyone. Um. Yeah. If you want to look her up, her name is Sandy Lerner. No, it's he's not full of shit, everyone. Like it's it's just straight up. Like, yeah, his his fucking cousin founded Cisco. Um. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, there's no fucking bias there whatsoever. Um no, that and that Karina, that Cisco starts with an S, not a C. Um, and my wife is very involved with that Cisco, considering she's a dietitian. I'm not a fan of that Cisco. Um, I've had mixed feelings about the actual Cisco uh, for years. I've, you know, I've had to work on them and that sort of stuff. But man, they're powerful, dude. Cisco gear is powerful. There's, there's very few things you can't do with a Cisco Edge router um, if you know how to wield that weapon. I had to record her telling the story of how they beat out the MIT team for the patent on the Switch, which is how they got started. Um, but she, she readily admits she's a communist. She's an ANCOM, um, a rich ANCOM. A fabulously rich Ancom. Uh, that um, essentially came, it, who who recognizes where her success came from, and you know she was at Stanford with Len, her somewhat husband. I don't know. They kind of just do their own thing. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of an interesting situation they were in that they be, I think it beat it by three or four days or something like that MIT for the filing of the patent 
Um, get a. She's too old to do politics. She doesn't care anymore. She cares about animal rights and she does um, all of her money. They have no kids. All of her money goes to animal rights activism afterwards. She's not like a vegetarian or anything like that. She just wants uh, meat production to be more ethical. That that piece of kit right there, folks. Like you have no idea. Like you have no fucking idea. Like if you don't work in industry, <laughs> I mean, this is this is this is one of those things. Um, yeah, this is this is a this is an edge router, uh, technically. Um, but it is it is a chassis. It's a five unit rack chassis. Um, the seven six zero four, um, and it is. You have used this many many times. You've just never known it. That's all. Um, yeah. Yep. Uh, well, a lot of those types of uh, pieces, Astral, they don't get replaced that often. Um, you put a uh, 7604 in place, you run that fucker until somebody tells you we have to upgrade the network because you don't, you don't want to, you don't want that kind of downtime. Um, what kind of games come with it? Um, yeah, we, we know. We buy them off cheap. I use for our hacker space. Nice. Rock on. Uh, I've got a few old pieces of Cisco gear laying around. Um, just in case. Just in case. I've got a couple of rack servers. Like I've got a blade right over here. Like, right in this closet. Um, but, yeah. Uh, um... No, my router doesn't look like that. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can find. Yeah, I mean, I know I can. Um, hmm. Let's see. Hardware. Oh, they redesigned their website. Look at that. Um. One sec, I'll fucking show you what I run. There she is. This is this is my router. This is a microtique. RB two zero one one UIAS dash two HND dash IN. Um Yeah. This this is this is what I <laughs> what I run. Um, I, I adore my Grotique gear. Um, there's not much this, this piece of kit can't do. Um, it is super fucking powerful. <laughs> Honestly, it's, it's, it's size belies what it contains. Um, but yeah, there's, there's not much that thing can't do. You have good taste, Astral. You have good taste. Um, yeah, I, I've been running Microtik uh, for a while. Um, there's their self-contained company. They're where are they based out of Ch the Czech Republic? I want to say. Um, you know me. I always forget where they're based out of. Latvia. Sorry. Latvia. Microtique is Latvian. Um Yeah, they're they're based out of Latvia. And they're they're not owned by anybody. They're not part of some fucking weird congl multinational conglomerate. Um nice, Astral. Um and yeah, they they have really interesting gear. 
Um, everything from like a little house switch that you may need or a little router for whatever, all the way up to high powered transmission gear. Like that, you know, hey, I need to beam a signal 15 kilometers away um, and I need it to be, high, you know, a high bandwidth signal. What do you have? They've got that shit. It is impressive piece, uh, you know, company, what they they have for gear. And honestly, short of like a $250,000 Cisco piece of like high end kit, I haven't seen anybody else produce gear that lasts as well as Microtik. Ubiquity, Blinksys, Netgear, Motorola, take your fucking pick. Um, if you want longevity from your equipment, if you want it to just be able to like run, Microtik. Honestly. Um, they are, I said years ago, like I went on a fucking rant about how like I hated everybody else's routers and switches and shit and access points and somebody asked like what do you run and I, was, and I just went off about my critique um they're like dude you sound like an ad for him i'm like i would take money from my critique i would take money i would honestly i would feel good about taking money from my critique honestly like I, I, i'm i'm down i'm fucking down they want to give me money to promote their products I would promote their products. It's something I could believe in because honestly, the consumer waste is basically non-existent because you're going to buy a router for the next 15 years, probably. Right? Like it's just going to fucking run. Right? Like if you've got to have these sorts of high tech pieces, like you should not be replacing them. There's too many rare earth minerals and weird shit and compounds that go into creating them. It should be a one and done or maybe two and done in a lifetime. They make that kind of gear. And so, like, you could feel good about it, and it'll do anything you need it to do. You need to bring in fiber into that thing, you can bring fiber into that thing. You need to build a mesh network out of that thing, you can build a mesh network out of that thing. Yeah, it is, they are impressively powerful, customizable, long-lasting, and fair-priced. Like, you can pick that router up that I showed you, like, for, I don't know, maybe 120 bucks. It's honestly, they, they, it's one of the few companies that I'd be like, yeah, I'll shill for you. No problem. Um, okay, cool. Bobby, thank you for that. Heads up. Um, our hacker space tends to use a mix of Microtik and Ubiquity stuff for endpoint. Yeah, I've never liked Ubiquity. Um, <laughs> Go to Shiku. You just looking at their gear, and yeah, I found my next router, no doubt. Uh, honestly, I, I I fucking I love those guys. I love those guys. Um, they make good gear. Um, I don't like the ubiquity stuff, Astral. I don't like the ubiquity stuff, but that's just me. I I, I know some guys who fucking adore them. Um, we didn't. Know, we also didn't like ubiquity. We got but we got a dump of it. I respect it. Free gear. Right? Free gear. You're like, ah, fuck it. I got a, a, a dumpster full of ubiquity gear. Guess we're doing ubiquity now. I get it. Oh, I had to replace the software with custom media. I, that's my issue with ubiquity. Is their, is their firmware and their, their operating software. It's fucking stupid. It's so much tied into the cloud, too. Oh, Gemma. That's tip of the iceberg for a Microtik router. That's literally a non-issue. Um, yeah, there's so much cloud tie-in shit with that ubiquity gear, Astral. Like, Jesus, goddamn Christ. Calm down, guys. I don't need to talk to your server to do everything. But yeah, on their shit, yeah, you kind of do. <laughs> Not a fan. Um, yeah, like that and more. Uh, Gemma, it's, that's literally baseline. Um, it, it, it legitimately, the power of their router OS, this is what it's called. It's called router OS is impressive. Um, 
you better be well that's the thing is it, it's not it, it can be a little overwhelming actually like if you're if you're a rookie um their system can be a little overwhelming let's just put it that way um yeah i'm just looking at <laughs> some of the shit that it fucking do they do you know bfd bgp fucking mpls uh, mpls they do mesh networking they do i mean it's honestly it's an impressive piece of kit uh, yeah, no, like I said, if if I ever got paid to do shill for Microtique, I would. I would. I'd be, I'd be perfectly content to do it. I, I would feel no issues, like, get taking their money. Yeah. Um, Astro, I love that you guys use them, though, in your hacker space. I mean, I get the ubiquity thing. Oh. <sighs> Yes, it does, uh, Karina. It does. Um, the uh, uh, the the square root, um, the uh, the square root principle. Um, but yes, basically it does. The distance affects the power uh, that is required to send that signal. Um, you also like. This is one of the, the intelligent things that most modern electronics do, including like your earbuds for like AirPods. As you get further from your uh, base source, the power has to increase to send that signal. And they do that intelligently these days. Um, well, I'd, I'd assume Astral that Karina was asking like, for wireless transmissions? I mean, because that's where that becomes uh, an issue. Fiber, itty bitty amounts, itty bitty amounts. If we're talking like, you know, transoceanic fiber, it becomes noticeable, but it's not to the extent of Bitcoin farming and shit like that. It's not even in the same world of power consumption. Hey, Adam. Um, yeah. So, there you go. There's, there's Kai's fucking tech rant, I suppose, for the day. I2P into routing technology. Um, <laughs> it's quite the entrance you made there, Adam. Um, See what I'm gonna make for dinner. I should probably eat something. I think I'm gonna do the same. I think I'm gonna replicate what I did for like this AM, but it's gonna be fucking. All right. So if we are gonna do bad movie night, then I should probably get ahead of that curve. Um. Yeah, I actually I'm thinking about that. Also, uh, if you are going to attend Bad Movie Night, we need to figure out what the fuck we want to watch because we still don't know what we want to watch for Bad Movie Night. Um, we have not actually figured that shit out. Um, We haven't done Reefer Madness. We were thinking about doing sort of like a genre decision. Um, like we'll, we'll pick a genre and go from there, but um, fair enough. Caboose has got a suggestion. If you're on the Discord server, which you can't participate in Bad Movie Night, um, if you're not on the Discord server, um, the Bad Movie Night channel, um, it looks like... Um, yeah, we'll put some suggestions in there. Um, oh god. The fucking, the actual paint drying movie, Blaze. Yeah. That, uh, somebody, they, like, crowdsourced to make the British film rating agency watch, like, what is it, seven or twelve hours of paint drying or some shit like that? Um... Yeah, Rev, we've got your post-apocalyptic movies with steel in the name. 
Um. <laughs> uh. Oh, Mystery Science Theater 3000 has an actual channel. Interesting. Um. Yeah. Um. Caboose is suggesting Food Fight, first bad, a uh, first animated movie for Bad Movie Night. Um. Rubber. I was actually Beastical. I was gonna watch that just the other night. I was feeling like I, I was feeling it, but my health got the better of me. Um. So. Um, have I ever seen Basket Case? I don't think so. I don't know. Let me look it up. Okay. Well, that's, that's a fucking, okay. So that's, that's definitely a plot line. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, don't, uh, you know, uh, don't worry, I'll get to it. It's just, you know, life scheduling, that sort of thing, Beastical. But I will watch it, don't worry. It's I'm, I'm intrigued. From that clip that we saw, I, I'm, I'm intrigued. Um, so, yeah, uh, Bad Movie Night uh, channel under the media section. Um, that's where most of this discussion and formation will occur. Um, we'll go from there. Let me, let me see some shit here. All right, still not. Fair enough. Um, yeah. It's been a weird week. We had to implement a whole bunch of new mod rules. Fucking had some good sex at the beginning of the week. Ended up injuring my ankle though. And that's a whole fucking thing. I didn't do it during the sex. I don't really don't think I did. I think I did it in my sleep. Um, had a fucking blowout on the Discord server. Fucking ended up cussing my doctor out. Um, had some really good outreach and some really good communication. Um, we got to dunk on fucking an insane level of racist. Um, for the sake of cool pull, it's all match to happen during the sex. Do what you got to do. Form your own head cannon. I'm I'm with it. Um, yeah. It's been a decent week. It's been a mixed week. It's been you know a grab bag. My I'm flared. Like my neuropathy is fucking miserable right now. It's a whole fucking thing. Um, we'll see if we can't rein it back in, but. Maybe my doctor is actually going to fucking argue with my insurance company to prescribe me testosterone and he can do it. He's not like your typical primary care physician. He can actually prescribe this shit and not like have people like looking at him weird and shit. Um, he told me he's already got two actually prescribed testosterone. He's like, no, I have two patients that I prescribed testosterone for. I'm like, okay. All right. Well, you know, maybe fucking here's a tip. Maybe every once in a while, kids, you got to look at your doctor and tell them to fuck off. Right. Maybe chewing out your doctor, like cussing out your doctor from time to time is good for, you know, you reestablish the boundaries and, you know, reaffirm, hey, this is a service based relationship. I'm in charge, not you. You know, it's good. It's good for the it's good for the program, apparently. So just, you know, one of my recommendations from time to time, look at your doctor and tell him to fuck off. Um, I told my surgeon that if he made me miss my uh, son's first day of kindergarten, that my mental health was going to be in such bad condition that he he would have other things to worry about. <laughs> so Swede under the table <laughs> threatened his doctor. Um you know, from time to time, you gotta, you gotta put them in check. Doctors get that God complex going. And from time to time, you gotta, you know, remind them what's up. He looked at me and said, well, if you take Lovenox shots versus the heparin drip, uh, there's extra risk. I go, I am not missing my son's first day of kindergarten. And he basically said, okay, well, you're bullheaded about it and I'm going to let you do it. All right. See ya. Fuck off. 
I, I told mine, I, I did mine with a hypothetical that like, you know, he said, well, we have to play the game. We have to, I said, look, doc, hypothetically speaking, someone I know, um, can obtain this themselves. And if your definite, your medical industry guidelines don't uh, line up with them thriving, they're going to choose the thriving over your guidelines. It's like, well, well, don't, don't do that. That's, that's, that's illegal. You shouldn't be doing that. I said, yeah, that's not what we're talking about, doc. <laughs> it's like, I, I don't, you know, sometimes you just got to remind them you're here for me. Remember that. And if you're not here for me, then, well, there's no reason for me to be here. Is there? That just time to time, you need to remind your doctor it's a service industry. You're essentially the cashier at Chipotle. Okay? Remember that, Doc. It's a good reminder. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's like, hey, you know, car wash, masseuse, retail clerk, fast food worker doctor you're all service industry understand your position in this relationship better yeah um yeah basically yeah oh yeah i straight up i formed a hypothetical for him i said let's just do a hypothetical here Am I a diplomat? Is that me? I mean, I know Swede is the fucking rich guy. Is, you know. Um, I'm a diplomat? I want to I wanna be a diplomat. Do I want to be an ambassador? Can I be an ambassador? That's a good gig. Can I be the ambassador to Fiji? Does anybody know it? Swede, do you know anybody? Can I get an ambassadorship to Fiji? <laughs> I, I do know the ambassador to... Um... Uh, the Caribbean Saint Saint is it Saint John? Yeah. Of course you do. Fucking course you do. Of course you do. <laughs> you, you uh, yeah. If you want to know about a cush job that you were born into, that's it. Um. Yeah, ambassador. Yeah, he was born into wealth, and he was also born in. He was born on Saint the island of Saint John. So basically. He's the British version of I was born into money. I'm, but I have an American passport. Uh, no, and th th this is British old money. Yeah, like real old money. Um, like we stole this from the subcontinent old money. Um, and and here, here's here's how old it goes. He, he's black. Oh Jesus. So this is he he yeah he was connected to an heiress who then passed down the the um the pension that the family still receives. Oh Jesus. Because of reparations of slavery. Yeah. That's some that's some old school oppression. That's like 1600s contract level. Yeah, like <laughs> That's that's British Empire territory. Like proper proper British Empire territory. I think his family was originally raided off the, uh, I think it was Ivory Coast. Um, so. Yeah, no, uh, Gemma, not Costa Rica. I want, I want Fiji. Like, I know I'm a fan of the Caribbean, and it'd be great if I could get, like, an ambassadorship to, like, uh, Dominique uh, or something like that. You have to speak French to be an ambassador to Fiji. <sighs> Look, I can... Parlez-vous français? We oui, we oui. we good. L'anglais uh, moi je pas le français. Um, fucking. Let's see. What's one of the? See, yeah, Dominique would be like. I mean, they speak English as their primary language. Um, so yeah, okay. We'll we'll uh, we'll go uh, uh, Dominique in the Caribbean. Which um, half of the island? Because isn't the other half, or is that Martinique that's Dutch? Yeah, no, no, no. That's yeah. Dominique is uh, uh, Dominica. You'll see it listed as, but if you like, if you're in the know, it's Dominique. 
Um, like if you're talking to rabbits, say Dominique. Um, but yeah, Dominica, uh, not the Dominican Republic, everybody. Two different nations. Um, Dominica. Um, yeah, they're they're former British colony technically, but not really because they were never properly colonialized. They were never taken over, but they speak um, English as their uh, functional primary first language. But they've got one of those weird Creoles is the backup. And then they've got um, I forget what the indigenous community actually speaks, what their the native uh, tongue is for the island. Uh was, that's a French island. Look, look at the way things are named. That ain't English. Um, it's their ties were to the Commonwealth. Uh, there's no Georgetown on it, so it can't be English. The, um. The, the former colon uh, uh yeah no the, everybody was there the fucking everybody tried to get a piece of it nobody fucking successfully got a piece of it um it's a really fascinating um but yeah the last group to take possession was great britain in 1763 um uh, the french had it the french had it first because the if you look at the names of the towns <laughs> it's french well they speak uh french creole um, but yeah, Rousseau, um, oh, Canadian. yeah, it's, it's, it's a really fascinating fucking, uh, island. Um, and it is, it, yeah, like basically everybody sailed past it because nobody thought that it was worth a fucking, it was worth their time because it didn't look like they could put a sugar plantation on it. And when they finally got, uh, tempted to take it over, <laughs> let's just say it wasn't an easy fight um but yeah it, it is it is a really fascinating fucking island it's it's technically been a colony for a bunch of people um but they had a real tough time colonizing it um and in fact the indigenous communities did have holdout locations the entire way through they were never completely defeated um so yeah it's 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 an interesting little island um if i had to pick one out of out of the um out of the caribbean to be an ambassador to i'd go with dominica um and it's ridiculously homophobic um they're not as bad as jamaica but let's just say they they yeah um, if you want a really good one to be the, the ambassador of Curacao, cause you never get hit by a hurricane there cause you're above the belt Fair enough. and you're, in the, you're, you're in the away from all the shit part of the Caribbean. <laughs> Maybe we need an ambassador to the president of the Virgin Islands. Um, fucking Trump was so dumb. Was so dumb. Um, I remember that. I remember. I remember that. Let's see. Is he already? See any uh, unreasonable demands from? Fuck it. I don't care. I don't care. Um. Hey, Twitch. Do do the thing where you actually load the page. That'd be great. Thank you. Um. Come on. Come on, keep going, keep going. All right, fair enough. Um, we're going to meet up on voice chat here after the show, um, and people like to hang out until Bad Movie Night actually starts. We're going to have to figure out what the fuck we're watching for Bad Movie Night because we still don't know. Um, but either way, um, yeah, sweet. Thanks for fucking hanging out. Um, everybody. Thanks for coming to the stream. Thanks for another week of this. Um, thanks for your attention and time. And uh, yeah, I you know I hope to see you over on Bad Movie Night. It's it's a lot of fun and it's a good way to close out the week. 
Um, and I have a couple of things I'm going to take for this bad movie night. Um, so <laughs> we're going to, uh, Kai's going to get a little fucking lit for this one. Um, so yeah. Um, I hope to see you there. Otherwise I'll see you next week. And I hope you guys are as well as you can be till next time. Uh, till next time guys, let's go say hi to Cobbs. <laughs>